the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Good morning and welcome to this Minster Church as we gather for this feast of the baptism of Christ. Welcome if you are here for the first time. It's lovely to have you here. Welcome if you are joining us online too. And welcome if you're a regular member of this community. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Because God was merciful, he saved us through the water of rebirth and the renewing power of the Holy Spirit. But through sin we have fallen away from our baptism. Let us return to the Lord and renew our faith in his promises by confessing our sins in penitence. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate faults. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. <coughs> Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Peter began to speak to those assembled in the house of Cornelius. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses for all the, to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Isaiah prophesies about Jesus 
in our Old Testament passage today, some 700 years before Christ, when he speaks of God's servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. He speaks of the Messiah's gentleness and mercy, of whose reed he will not break, and also of his determination. He will not go faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth. And this wonderful reading is one of the prophecies about Jesus the Christ or Messiah. Jesus' baptism in our Gospel reading, we notice, was insisted on by Jesus himself, despite the reluctance of John the Baptist. It was endorsed by the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove and the voice of God from heaven. This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. So, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were involved here long before the term Trinity was coined. <coughs> this holy act led to baptism being adopted as the means of entry to the Church, not only a baptism of repentance, uh, as for John the Baptist, the forgiveness of our sins, but being made clean and righteous before God through Christ. Later, symbolically, those being baptized were deemed to die to sin when immersed in Christ. As Jesus died for our sins and was raised to life by God the Father through the Holy Spirit. And since then, uh, baptism has been fundamental to Christianity, which is the initiation into the Church. But more than that, much more than that, it involves the conferring of the Holy Spirit upon the person being baptized through the prayer of the ordained minister, later to be confirmed and renewed at confirmation through the prayer of the bishop in our own times. It also relies on the person being brought up, of course, in the faith by his Christian peers and elders. And baptism is the key building block of the church. Did Jesus have this in mind when he insisted on being baptized? We are not told, but he was and is the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. So he probably did. Baptism, as we have said, is the key initiation into the Church, ratified personally by Jesus Christ, who insisted on being subjected to it himself, and ratified by the Holy Spirit and by Father God himself, all at the baptism of Jesus. We are celebrating today. But the Holy Spirit is not limited by baptism or to baptism. He is part of the whole Trinity of God Almighty, three in one. And this is shown to us in the Acts 10 reading where Peter addresses the family and household of Cornelius the centurion. The uh, context isn't given in the reading. So we have to read the Bible either side of our New Testament lectionary reading to find out that Cornelius was a God-fearing and devout Gentile man, a centurion, who was instructed by an angel to send men to Joppa for a servant of Simon called Peter, lodging with Simon the Tanner, who lived by the sea. Cornelius must have been dumbfounded as he didn't know these men or their location. But being a devout man, he carried out the instructions of the angel to the letter. Peter, meanwhile, was praying on the roof of Simon the Tanner's house in Joppa, and he became hungry. In a vision, he was shown a sheep full of unclean creatures that was lowered down, and he was instructed to kill and eat but he would not, being a devout Jew. This happened three times. And Peter heard the voice say, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. When the men from Cornelius appeared, Peter agreed to go with them, 
to a Gentile household, which no God-fearing Jew could enter, because he realized that God was telling him through his vision of the sheet that, as he told Cornelius and his household, I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. Peter went on to speak of Jesus of Nazareth and his ministry right from his baptism, his healings and good works, and his death on the cross and resurrection. He concluded by saying that all the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Our lectionary reading finishes here, but the very next verse tells us that while Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, who they heard speaking in tongues and extolling God. Peter realized that they could not withhold the sacrament of baptism from these good Gentile folk, whom the Holy Spirit had already anointed, and he ordered them all to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. God had plans for the Gentile help of a faithful Cornelius and his household, plans that Cornelius could not even dream about, and plans that Peter, before his vision on the roof, would have thought outrageous. It is truly a case of God working in mysterious ways for his wonders to perform. But we should never discount the ability of the Holy Spirit to act without our permission. We like to try and confine the Holy Spirit sometimes um, in, our, in the way we carry on in, in churches and in the, in the church. But he can act at will in any way that pleases him even if it may offend our sensibility. I've spoken to passionate evangelists who beg the Holy Spirit to come down upon their community or their project and be disappointed, only to find later that the Holy Spirit had been working dramatically on another project, not very far away, and wanted them to join him in his holy work. And when they did this, the mission of the project succeeded beyond measure. I think it's better always to be open, as St. Peter was in our New Testament reading, to the mysterious, surprising, and unbidden workings of the Holy Spirit. And maybe we should try to follow the Holy Spirit in His work through spiritual discernment, rather than trying to influence Him and channel Him into supporting our own personal projects, however worthy. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us worship the Saviour with joy and make our prayer to our Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, save the Holy Spirit from the Church, that the glory of the Son may be known and proclaimed. We pray for our next Church, our priests and people. Bless all who come for baptism. Fill them with grace to walk in the way of Christ, whose example they have followed. Lord, in your mercy, hear Gracious Lord, cleanse with the water of holiness all that is corrupt in the world today. Bless the people of Ukraine. We pray for all casualties and for those nursing the injured. And we think of all those that have been displaced and missing home and loved ones. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. Loving Lord, bless all who are preparing for baptism, for themselves or for their children. Give them the light of the Holy Spirit to lead them to new life in Christ. May all that we do in our daily lives be pleasing in the sight of God. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. 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 Faithful Father, be with those for whom the glory is veiled by suffering, and let the light of heaven shine upon them again. As Christ followed the way of human obedience, so may he bring healing to the sick and comfort to the sorrowful. Today, our prayers are to God. Isabel Escape, Isabel Pacheco, Sheila, Christopher, Alan, Jean, Ben, Emily, Karen Christopher, Anne, Wendy and Florence, Janet, Sue, Monica, and Jeffrey. Lord, in your mercy, Conqueror of death, we pray for those we have loved and seen no more. For the recently departed Karen McGuire, Richard Wheeler, and Elena. And on the anniversaries of their death, we pray for Bruce Hamlin, Philip Fletcher, Annette Oakman, Kathleen Rose Florington, Margaret Ledbetter, Rosalind Dorothy Jackson, and Bill Ware. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray in the name of Christ, the Son, the Beloved. <coughs> Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ in the one Spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
gracious God, accept the offering of your church, the hearts of your people, joined in praise and thanksgiving, in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. And now we give you thanks because by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a holy people. In Jesus Christ our Lord. You renew that mystery in bread and wine to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Betrayed, 
took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. George, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share one bread.
of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but I only say the word, and I shall be healed. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to come and have a under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may have more dwell in him and he in us.
Lord of all time and eternity, you opened the heavens and revealed yourself as Father in the baptism of Jesus, your beloved Son. By the power of your Spirit, complete the heavenly work of our rebirth through the waters of the new creation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work for your praise and glory. Amen. Just draw your attention to a couple of things that are on the weekly sheet. You will see that next Sunday at 4.30, it's listed as uh, carols and readings for Epiphany Time, which is always a lovely service. It sort of takes the form of the carols and lessons that you'll be familiar with for Christmas, but it tells, of course, the using Epiphany carols and readings too. So make a note in your diary for that. That's next Sunday at 4.30, carols and readings for Epiphany Time. And then I draw your attention to the sponsoring of floodlighting for the Minster. You'll see that it's raised a good bit of money for us since we started doing this. But those who have put their names down have sort of ended a little bit now. So we need some new people. And again, if that is something that you may think you're able to support us with, uh, read about it and have a word, as I say, and contact us if you want to go ahead with that. And the only other thing I'd say to you uh, is, as you continue to come and worship here, you may want to be putting on a new layer to keep yourself warm because we are in the process of receiving some very hefty utility bills, as you can imagine, at this moment in time. Just to give you a guideline, I think November normally is about £1,500. Our bill was 6000 Hold your breath. In December, it's normally 2000 we're anticipating it to be 12,000. Fortunately, November was mild, December wasn't, hence the, the, the prices. It, it shouldn't come as a surprise to anybody that, based on our own domestic circumstance, but those are incredible figures that we are going to have to try to find, so we may have to turn the heating down slightly. So I would encourage you to put extra layers on, to keep coming, put extra layers on and perhaps if you are reviewing what you give to the minster in your giving be aware and perhaps think of some of that and it may perhaps encourage you to be more generous if you're able to accepting of course that your domestic bills I know will also be high at this moment too. Let's stand to sit.
Christ gives us his spring of water welling up to eternal life. Perfect in you the image of his glory and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.